America now has two B-21 Raider stealth bombers conducting flight tests, with the second of these advanced new aircraft taking flight for the first time on Thursday afternoon. Now, like the first B-21, which has been flying since November of 2023, this new bomber took off from the famed Air Force Plant 42 in Palmdale, California, and then flew northeast, landing at Edwards Air Force Base just a bit less than 25 miles away, where it joined the first flying raider for ongoing tests. Now, Northrop Grumman, the B-21's manufacturer, has also produced at least two more stealth bomber airframes, known as G-1 and G-2, which were built solely for ground testing. And based on previous statements from Air Force officials, we know that there are at least two more B-21 airframes at some stage of production within the classified confines of Plant 42. But realistically speaking, it could well be more. Now, according to Air Force Secretary Troy Mank, the B-21 testing program will now advance into mission system testing and weapons evaluations, which is a really big step toward getting these bombers into service, which is projected to happen by the close of the decade. Now, unlike past stealth fighter and bomber efforts, which have pretty universally seen serious budget overages and technical delays, Northrop's B-21 program has thus far sort of served as a clinic and how to get advanced new jets into service. Now, the firm received a development contract for the bomber back in 2015 with a projected per unit cost of $550 million in 2015 currency each. And when you adjust that for today's inflation, that would shake out to roughly $762.4 million per bomber. But early development on the B-21 has gone really smoothly, and as a result, the current reported estimated cost per aircraft sits at around $700 million. And that means this bomber has actually gotten cheaper since the program began. Now, a great deal of that success can be attributed to Northrop Grumman's advanced digital testing regime, allowing them to functionally test the aircraft in a simulated environment extensively before ever bolting on a single body panel. But it is also worth noting that Northrop has had to eat a bit more than $2 billion in losses associated with this program mostly tied to inflation, workforce disruptions, and changes in their manufacturing infrastructure that they say will allow them to increase the production rate of these bombers, which will in turn eventually result in higher profits for Northrop Grumman. However, I have also long speculated that part of the B-21's success can all but certainly be attributed to a much more secretive Northrop Grumman program, one that's so classified we still don't know its official designation, but that most of us know as the RQ-180. This large, high-flying stealth spy plane is believed to have entered service in 2015 and shares a similar size and plane form to the Raider. It seems possible, if not likely then, that the B-21 has directly benefited from RQ-180 development and testing, basically allowing the Raider program to skip right past headaches that were already solved by its sister jet. Now, the B-21 also bears a striking resemblance to its predecessor, the only in-service stealth bomber in the world, Northrop's B-2 Spirit. Though the B-21 is a bit smaller and comes equipped to fly a much wider array of missions. The still very stealthy B-2 has been in service since 1997, and despite upgrades over the years, can still really only function in one role as a heavy payload bomber. The B-21, on the other hand, is equipped with what's been described as the most advanced intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance suite ever fielded, making this extremely low observable aircraft just as much a spy plane as it is a bomber. Now, the Raider is also expected to carry advanced communications hardware, allowing it to serve as a central networking hub for all other assets in the battle space, from managing AI-enabled drones, to coordinating with crewed fighters, to engaging targets identified by ground forces, and more. So to put it simply, if the F-35 could be described as a quarterback in the sky, well, then you might call the B-21 an offensive coordinator with more powerful sensors, more onboard computing power, greater stealth, and, you know, more than 30,000 pounds worth of warheads 
to deposit on foreheads down below. And while the B-2's dated radar absorbent skin is very fragile, forcing the Air Force to house these bombers in climate-controlled hangars, the B-21's radar absorbent material is said to be a multi-generational improvement, meaning you can leave these bombers out in the elements without concern, and the cost of maintaining that vital stealth skin is significantly reduced. But while the technological improvements made in the 36 years since the B-2 started flying are certainly a big deal, I would contend that the most important difference between these programs comes down to volume. The United States currently operates just 19 B-2 Spirits, estimated to have cost somewhere north of $2 billion apiece, but the DoD currently plans to buy at least 100 B-21 Raiders, with discussions already underway about potentially even increasing that figure. Now, again, the B-21 is expected to enter service by the close of this decade, and will eventually go on to replace both retiring B-2 Spirits and B-1B Lancers. And based on how production and testing has gone so far, that timetable seems to be holding up. I've been dreaming on in my head like I've seen it a life.